musical. So kiddos, you'll head that way. All of our stage props are going to head that way because our youth would be coming on the stage immediately after that. Now, this is the sad part. Brace yourself. There's no donut time for the kiddos today. All of us All right. Okay. So kids, as soon as we're finished, you get to go to class because it's super god day. I'm so excited. All right. Another disclaimer. Are you ready for this? I texted the kid mid team this morning and said, girls, we're going to mess up. Okay? We're going to mess up. And that's okay. Because we don't have to bring perfect praise. That is not what we are about. We're about coming together and leading you to worship a God who is holy and He is perfect. So no matter how imperfect we are today, or if we mess up, He is still worthy to be praised. Alright kiddos, are you ready?
mighty heavens. Praise the Lord in his mighty Praise the Lord in his mighty sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. <laughs>
growing up, going to Sunday school and singing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yeah, Regina, you're going to do it with us. But you got to hold your horses, because we're going to sing a little something, something first, and then we're going to sing. Now, if you've noticed, today's kind of like a spirit section, you know, it's Youth Sunday, it's Kids Sunday, and we're kind of here to get our youth ready to praise for you, too. So we thought we'd be a spirit section, the CCMP spirit section today. So give them a hand and we look good. Teachers that you see on stage today, 
joy. They had a huge learning curve, learning when to send kids out and when we're doing what and where they're supposed to be. So we have faced a lot of a cha lot of challenges, but that did not stop us. Just like CCNP, it does not stop us. So we want to say today that no matter what we face, no matter what kind of day we're having or what's in our way, we're going to sing our praises out because we are not. We are not going to let anybody else praise for us. No rock, nothing else, just us because he made us in his image to worship him. So we want to sing our praises out. We put this on the movement this week, so we would like for you to sing along when we start our song. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is becoming. Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. And through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. During the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Luke 19, 37-40 tells us, as he was drawing near, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. All right, kiddos, ready to sing? Let's do it. <laughs>
are a teacher and you are not up here with us already, you probably should make your way through the door. And church, you may be seated. Good morning. Something different about the day. Seems almost like the youth is in charge today. But you can tell there's different energy. Um, a couple of things I want to start off with. I'm doing announcements today. So the first thing I would like to do is have this church family welcome back a part of the family that traveled off and went to Texas and is now finally back. Uh, so let's welcome the Wilsies back. Last time we're gonna let you come back. 
this one last time. <laughs> but, uh, Mark, you want to come up and give us an update? Uh, okay, a couple weeks ago, what was the last week? I can't remember. Uh, we had an update on the some of the permits we were going to be pulling this week. Uh, just a quick update, all those permits have been completed. The design for the septic system, permit use out on the property, that's all been done. And that has been turned into the county. So hopefully within the next 15 days, the county has 15 days to approve it and get it back to us. So that's going to be the first permit that we pull. So this is a great milestone for CCMP. So let's give the Lord a hand for moving forward. journey as we all move together. So keep us in your prayers. Thank you. For the, uh, please pray for the journey team we had. Our, uh, our harvest Sunday where people brought their pledges and their donations. We collected $39,486 last Sunday. However, we also had $105,416 worth of pledges still to come in. And there was a number of people that were out of, uh, were out of uh, town last week. So the pledges and contributions will continue to come in. We also have some really big meetings coming up with potential donors, so please pray for that also. Thank you. church grow larger on our new property that we just got and we're just growing tremendously and how we get more people to come to our church Lord. Just please bring our more offering into the place Lord and we just love you so much and just thank you for letting us be in our hearts Lord and just we're thankful for what you have done for our lives Lord. Pray for we be safe to where we need to drive Lord and we just thank you for so much for letting us still live today Lord. We love you so much, and please pray for people out of town to drive safe to where they need to go, Lord, and pray for the homeless people who need homes and the sick people who need the medication and to be in the hospital, Lord. We love you so much, and thank you for letting us live today, Lord. I say your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nate. And Rob, and, uh, man, how about them kids? <laughs> So uh, this week, I took the time to uh, reflect a little bit um, you know, on the choices I've made. You know, I think, you know, each and every day, we have choices to make. And, uh, you know, so I think of what I've done, you know, some good, some bad, some ugly, man, to be honest. You know, but I think each and every day, we go out into the world. And we got to face a crazy world. We have choices to make. So what we want to talk about today is, is what we want to end up at is what would Jesus do? Remember, several years ago, you don't see a lot anymore. You see these braces with WWJD. When I was a kid and I was like, what is that? You know, and, and actually, you know, some of my friends would tell me, you know, I didn't understand at all. So when I, when I was a kid, you know, I see these... You know, these teenagers here, when I was their age, I just really didn't know. Um, so, it says, what, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? So, now that I've made it to this point in my life, I think about, man, if I would have just only, you know, at their age, maybe, maybe I'd have done some things a lot different. You know? 
and I, I think about too a lot a lot when we you know go to the workplace you know some of us adults we go into the workplace and come on guys I mean you know you know what's out there you know what you hear every day some I mean there's foul language there's you name it but then these kids they go into school and, and each it was pretty rough when I was in school. I mean, just think back. Think to yourself and think back how that was. Bullying, drugs, alcohol. And that's stuff that they got to face every single day. So another thing I wanted to say, too, was, you know, a lot of what the world tells us to do and what they're going to see on a daily basis and what we're going to see in our workplaces, a lot of what the world's going to tell us is, no, nah, it's not really of God. Um, let me flip through right here for one second. Got a verse I want to tell you about. So it's uh it's Romans 12, 2, verse 2. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you would be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. See, when I was their age, my outlook was not to seek God's will. Not only was I not seeking, I didn't even know what it was. And so I want to say I'm proud of our, of our young kids that were up here this morning. I'm proud of our kids and the ones sitting out here, and I'm proud of the parents because we're raising up a generation to seek God's will. I wasn't doing that. Not when I was their age. So I got a, I've had a lot of re, I had a lot of catching up to do. I'm proud where God's put me today. We pick up here. Um, so get back into, you know, what would Jesus do? Look back, you know, over the past year and a half, working with the youth group, and I think back to one of the lessons that, that we talked about. So this is nothing new to you guys. One of the lessons that we talked about a while back. And I keep leaning back on that. It's choices and decisions each and every day that we face. What are we what are we gonna do? You ever talk about that, kids? You know, so so we want to look in the Bible. This is where it's at right here. We want to look in the Bible and think, you know, what did Jesus do? Kids, I mean, I'm gonna get real here. What are we gonna do when our kids are in school on a Friday afternoon and they say, hey, the kid comes up, let's go to this party. You know, there's, there's going to be drinking there. Let's go to this party. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when one of your friends walk up and you hear it saying foul language? Do you pick up on that? Do you just join in? You know, what are, what are we going to do? You know, uh, parents, think back when you were in school. There were kids smoking. There were kids doing drugs, alcohol. When, when somebody walked up, they lighted a cigarette, you know, as you as a teenager, are you going to pick it up and do that too? So we're faced choices each and every day. Choices, those choices can change our life. The choices that these kids have to make right now, all of our kids, they, it, it can change their life. And so it's, it's a very serious thing. So it's a temptation. You know, what do we do when we're tempted? Ah, do I do that? Do I join in? You know, we're called, we're called to be set apart and different. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, man, I didn't want to be different. I wanted to be with everybody. I wanted to be doing what they were doing. I wanted to be popular. I wanted to be in the crowd. The last thing I wanted to do was be set apart. But yet, that's what we're called to do. And again, I'll say how proud I am because these kids, they are set apart. They strive to be more like Christ instead of part each day. So in Matthew 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 11, and it talks about when Jesus... Now, this is, this is nothing new. This is more of a common passage in the Bible. To me, and I'm sure to you guys too, and, and I would say it's probably very common to me because of how, how crucial it is to understand what Jesus did right here. To really analyze that. So... So this is where Jesus was tested in the wilderness. Um, he was, so we'll start with verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted 
by Satan or by the devil. After fasting for forty days and forty nights, he was he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, "If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread." Now he is he's he's hungry. And he wants to eat. I mean, he was a man like us. He was on this earth. And uh, let me take back, he wasn't like us at all. But at that time, a lot of people were testing that. You know, so he was hungry. He wanted to eat. What he said. Jesus answered, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but that every word, every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man, I want to eat. And he answers, with God's Word. Alright, we'll move on to the next. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written the devil knows God's Word just as well as anybody. Just as well as the man himself. Don't forget that. He can bring it to you also. And it, we got to be careful who we're listening to. So, He will command His angels concerning you and they will lift they will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written that you do not put the Lord your God to the test. Alright, how about the next one? The next one really gets me. It'll get, it gets a lot of people, I'm telling you. So, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him the king of all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this, he says, all of this I will give to you if you will bow down and worship me. He can, he can have it all. Everything in this world, the devil said, he'll give it to you. All you got to do is bow down and worship me. What did Jesus said. Jesus answered to him, Away from me, Satan. He didn't just say get away. He said, Away from me. That's what I want to say when it comes to me. That's what I want to say. And he's right there. I want to tell you guys too. You know, I know it. Just as my God's right there, so is, so is Satan right there on my shoulder. And I know when he comes to me with something like that, I want to say it. Away from me, Satan. And the devil, the devil left him. And the angels came to attend him. Now, we're faced with choices each and every day we go out of this world. Sunday, it's, it's so amazing that we can come and have a feeling like this with our family and come together like we do on Sunday nights, kids. But when we leave and we go to work on Monday and we go to school, the second we walk in the door, there it is. There it is. Everything you can think of that the world's got to offer is right there. I didn't know when I was their age. I want these kids to know. I want your friends and family. You, I want everybody to know that What the world tells us is, is not necessarily of God. Most of the time. So when we get put in a case like that, I want, to, I want us to think about, you know, what, what would Jesus do? Because, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, I made bad choices. I made some bad choices, you know. But now I know. What would you, what do you do? Get away from me, Satan! I want to be. I want to be like that, and so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And I'm going to switch gears a little bit because we've got a lot to offer you guys today, and um, so we got to move a little quickly. But wanted to start off by saying that my boy Zach here and Ricky, you guys, you guys know Ricky joined our church a little bit ago. He's been playing his uh, French horn here for quite a while, so. They had, they, they have wrote a version of Amazing Grace that they were going to do for us today, but Ricky is actually in the Charlotte Symphony. Zach's on the Mount Pleasant High School band, and him and his family, along with serving here a lot, they serve there all the time. 
a lot of the time too really support Zach and uh, what, what he does. But Ricky's in the Charlotte Symphony also. He's performing today. He didn't have a control over that a couple weeks ago, but we're proud of him for being there and performing on this day. And we're, you know, unfortunately, we don't get to see him, them play right now, but that's okay because we're going to honor him for it because we're proud of him. Something else we've got right after that, or right now, we're going to move into. So, just like Janet was saying, Maggie and Audrey and Hallie, the whole Cox family, they're not here today. They're out of town. I think it was a wedding, right? Unfortunately, you know, we don't, we, we like when everybody's here. And especially, I mean, man, they, you know, these kids serve, you know. But they wanted to participate. They said, no, I'm, I'm not just going to sit on the bench and be, you know, that's, we're going to participate. So what we got for you today, one now and one a little bit later, these girls wanted to do a testimony. And so soon you'll be seeing Maggie do a testimony on the video screen, which I thought was amazing for her to want to do that. But I wanted to prepare you guys because that's a real, real serious thing. I mean, we've all got our message in our testimony. and It's not easy to go back to where you might have been on the bottom and where God brought you up. It's not easy to go back there to tell people. And so I just wanted to really prepare your heart and mind for what we got here. And we're going to present that to you here in a second. Aaron, you got that? Oh. So we want, we want to go ahead and open up. And uh, first up, we'll just give Maggie a round, a round of applause. I'm really proud of her for doing it. Good morning, everybody. This is me. Um, Filming from my car, which is weird. I promise I'm not driving, not to be crazy. I know what you're thinking, Cecil. Being careful, I promise, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, so my testimony, I've never been asked to do this before, um, so I'm a little bit nervous. Don't really know where to start or where to finish either because, I mean, the testimony isn't a, I guess it's a story of how you got started, not necessarily how you ended because, I mean, you're still living. You're living a testament every single day. So I guess I could say that the beginning of my testimony was when um, I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior when I was a freshman in high school. It was by far the best decision I've ever made. Um, coming from South Carolina, I thought I'd been saved before that when I was in middle school, but I feel like now, looking back, it was more of a, uh, I want to get saved so I don't have to go to, I don't have to worry about going to hell when I die, which is probably one of the most dangerous misunderstandings of salvation that one could have, because, yeah, that's a part of it, but really, it shouldn't have anything to do with the motive. When I got saved, as a freshman, I understood that I really did have a best friend in Jesus, that my Heavenly Father cared about me. And that was just such a crazy thing for me to believe because someone so powerful that created every single thing, I just, it was difficult for me to believe that He would care about the old man. Oh man, you're coming to you. Ugh, sorry, guys. But when I believed that what he said in his word, I love you, I made you, you're important, you have a purpose, when I let that sink in, when I decided to believe that, then everything else made sense. I read somewhere one time where um, sometimes the hardest part of the journey is believing you're worthy of the truth. And in my mind, I mean, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve to be here, but God loved me enough to send His Son <laughs> to give me a purpose so that my purpose could be built on earth and 
I'll be able to do it in time afterwards. I was actually scheduled to be baptized at the church that um, I used to go to and we left before that could happen, sadly, but it's okay because it worked out. I got baptized here at CCMP and it was it was the best. <laughs> it was great. Um, man, the youth group here at church has had such a positive influence on me. Even after being saved, it's such a struggle going through high school, feeling like you're the only one like you. Like, you look around and there's people say, oh, I love God, and you look at them and it's like, really now? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. And it's, and it's honestly more of an encouragement to me seeing people like that to think, okay, I can't let them be thinking that about me. Like, I can't, I can't, look, I can't be a stereotype. Like, I do not want to be a stereotypical Christian. At all, because I mean, what's what's the point, you know? Um, why waste my breath saying that I'm a Christian if my life displays other things? So that's something I'm still going through, um, struggling with, fighting to improve my walk with Christ. Um, but I can definitely say that in youth group has created an incredible atmosphere for me to, in a way, recharge my battery, to be reminded, okay, this is who I am, this is who God has made me to be, I'm striving to be a better version of that person every single day, and I know that every single Sunday I can come back to where I call home and be encouraged by the people I love and who love me that There's still something to fight for. There's still something worth fighting for. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, working with Janet has really opened my eyes to, I think, what God has called me to do with my career, which is so exciting because, you know, college is sooner than it feels like. Um, but I would have never been, I would have never thought that I would be working with kids. No one else did either. I'm skinny one, I promise. But I was really, I'm falling in love with it, and I love doing it. And thank you, Janet, for letting me explore that realm of possibility. And, and then playing music with everybody. Um, you really know what the word team means at CCMP, and being on the worship team has just been amazing. Um, everyone is so awesome, and I love absolutely everybody there. I love making music with everybody and bringing glory to God with everyone there as a team. And words just can't be express. Just how thankful I am for every single one of you sitting out there, every single person on the stage in the group. Every single one of you has touched my heart and impacted me more than you think you have, really. Um, and I just can't wait to see where the rest of this goes. I can't wait to see how each one of us grow into the person that God has called us to be. And I can't wait to see how how different we all branch out from the same place that we had dug our roots at. Because, you know, like I said earlier, we're all a little bit crazy in our own way, but that's good because you've got to be crazy in order to figure your youth group, just a little bit, you know, some of us are more crazy, more crazy than others. But, yes, this is my family. I love you guys so much, and I just can't wait to see how how much we grow in the next however many years we'll be in youth group. I know I'll probably be like 25 years old. Still remember the youth group. No problem. Right? Yeah. Um, but yes. I love you guys. Happy Eat Sunday.
Do you guys think her parents are proud of her? Yeah. My daughter's too. You've probably seen her before kicking me or punching me or running around here. But um, as I see Maggie, you know, I, I want that to be my daughter. Um, but Nathan, we're going to have another testimony. Nathan wants to give a testimony. Um, before we go into that, just to give you a little background, we have our youth group at Matt and I are the youth pastors at our church, and our wives help us. Um, and then we have the Reinhardts that come as well. Um, we have our youth at the Rice's house, my wife's parents' house. And we, we kind of set this up accordingly because there's rocking chairs. It's usually nighttime when we end. There's stars and then a little fireplace. So um, that, that's what you got to see. Be good, Nathan. I just want to say that I was born and raised as a Christian. No cuss words, nothing bad. And my father stayed like that. I would not cuss, nothing bad like that. And so I've always wanted to try to get people to be Christians also. And I tell them about God. And sometimes, sometimes people won't listen. I try to bring them to church, they probably be busy. And it's just things like that. And so about two years ago, we were at an old church. And I didn't learn as much stuff as I already have in almost a year at this church. And uh, that's amazing. And so I'm just glad that we found this church. And we're so blessed to be able to be a family to come here as Christians and to meet this wonderful family. And I'm glad we found it. Oh. I'm glad that we found a bigger home on the two properties that we had found. And I'm glad we raised all this money to be able to make a bigger one. I'm just blessed for all people who has been with me through the times and the hard times. And I'm just blessed to have parents that are Christian also. <laughs> I'm just glad to have a youth group that's like a brothers and sisters to me. I'm just blessed for all the things that's good that's ever happened to me. And I'm glad I went to a good school and, and be able to be a good Christian to other people who need to be encouraged to be, have the Lord in their world. I'm just so blessed. Great testimony. Um, I wanted to touch on something that he talked about, you know, that's been on my heart. Maggie, Nathan, you know, their 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 parents, they just didn't wake up one day and say, you know, I'm gonna do the right thing. Their parents raised them that way. Um, you know, they over time their parents included them in prayer, they talked about the word. If something happened to them, they encouraged them through the word. Um, you know, and, 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 and that, that's really good because um, it, it'll be passed on to them, as you can see, and then they'll believe, and when they have tough times, they'll lean on God. Um, it, if you look in, in Timothy, Paul says, you know, hey, Timothy, I see the same faith that's in you. It was in your grandmother and in your mother, and that was passed on. Um, now, I want you to think about something else. Now, what if it was not that way? What if they were not raised that way? And, um, and I, I have a, uh, a brother, his name's Shane. And um, sorry for me to talk about him, but I love him a lot. And he, I was adopted and he was not. You know, and he went back to, to where he it just wasn't, you know, you weren't raised in that environment. And we well, had good influence. And you, he was not in church, you know, and, and he made bad decisions over time. Um, when you make bad decisions, you know, there's a lot of consequences. But, um, you know, I've always, inside of me, always prayed for my brother and said, you know, I'm, I'm always going to pray for my brother. I'll never give up, give up on my brother. Because God never gave up on me. And um, 
just like many of us, you know, we've we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've I've had some, some rough times in my life that I'm not proud of. Um, and we all have. Paul says, you know, I'm, I was chief among sinners because you know he he put Christians in jail, killed them. But um, you know, if if the if the child's not raised that way, um, it's easy for us sometimes as Christians to say, oh, you know, they're not. I told them to do this. I told them to do that. They didn't do it. And I, I've done the same thing with my brother. But always remember that if you have that loved one and whoever that is. Don't ever give up on them. Always pray for them. We don't, I, you, you, you haven't walked a mile in their shoes. You don't know what it is if someone to, for not to encourage you, for someone not to tell you that it's okay, or give you that scripture. If you don't have that, that's when there, there's going to be issues. Um, but, you know, we, we have a God that can change all that. And um, I, I firmly believe that as long as we continue to uh, reach out and love and never give up on them. Someone asked, well, you know, David, when are you going to, when's the last time, the last time, you know, with your brother? Because, you know, you get let down sometimes. But, you know, the scripture, somebody come to Jesus said, how many times should I forgive my brother? And his answer really, it wasn't, he gave a number, but it wasn't, oh, you know, you forgive him a hundred times or whatever. You continue to forgive him, that was his answer. Because that's what he would do. Um, he's long-suffering, he's patient, he's kind, he's slow to anger, and so should we be. And we should always see the best in them, no matter what. And um, these children that we have, the youth group, we are the other side of the coin. We are raised them that way, but they will meet other people that are not saved or that are struggling, and they will reach out the right way. Because that's what we try to do here. We try to live our life the way that God wants us to. We spend time with Him. We, we ask for guidance. They get guidance from their parents. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of them. And, and um, you know, I'm proud of, of our church and where we came from. But I just don't want us to ever forget that, you know, everything's just not perfect. It won't always be perfect. It's just not that way. Um, I'm going to go into another testimony real quick. I think that's Audrey's next. If you would, you can play Audrey's next one. So at first, I didn't really know what I was going to talk about. I mean, testimony. It means evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. And then I ask myself, how do I have proof that Jesus exists that, and that he's my savior? I can't, but my faith can. The testimony to me is how God has changed my life. And that's a lot of things. <laughs> Throughout someone's life, you go through bullying, drama, breakups, breakdowns, losses, death, school, stress, rejection, losing, depression, moving, sickness, being alone, and goodbyes. These times tear you down and make you feel like life just isn't worth living. People think that school drama it's just normal and that it's a part of life, which it is, but how can you, how much can you really take? A huge part of my life has been drama, I'm sure everybody's has, and everyone's situation is different, which is why I wouldn't say that it's easy to get through. I first got saved when I was six years old. It was on May 16th, 2008. I knew who Jesus was and that I needed him, but I didn't fully understand. I got saved again about five years ago, and ever since then I have grown in the Lord. I started getting into devotionals and reading more. I really knew then that God, I needed him, and that without him I couldn't get through anything. I really knew then what being a Christian was all about. 
And it's hard at school being different, being a follower of Christ. In a sea of non-believers and even Satanists, it's not easy, not cussing or talking about people, being mean to people and putting them down, it excludes you from a lot. Because that's society now, and not being so-called normal sets you aside, which means not having many friends or being made fun of. Faith. Faith is being, faith is just being who you are, but in Christ, I guess, is how I would say. Um, faith is believing even when you can't see. Faith is what keeps me going at school because when times get hard, I remember that in the end, I win because I have Jesus. And I think to myself, what brought me to my real faith? And I would have to say it to my parents. They have taught me right from wrong and God's word since I could even talk. Um, I've grown up in church my whole life. And throughout my life, I always try my hardest to put that into everything and anything that I do. And for this video, my point is to tell each of you how God has changed my life. And I'd have to say that moving from South Carolina when I was 12 to here, North Carolina, was the biggest impact on my life so far negatively. Um, I loved it in South Carolina. I had a bunch of friends. And leaving them was very hard for me. Um, I've always known North Carolina because my family has always lived up here. We would come up here and visit um, every couple months and or years. Um, I loved it here, coming here for a week or so, but South Carolina was my home to me. I was born in Georgia, but we moved from there to South Carolina when I was six. So I've never lived in where more than six years and so but moving to South Carolina when I was in first grade it was my first year starting public school I was homeschooled for that and going to public school it exposed me to a lot of new things and for me great friends and I met my best friend there in first grade she was in my homeroom um, her name is Campbell and we got very close. Um, I didn't move till after sixth grade, and she was like family to me. And so moving away from that was very, very hard. And moving is always hard, but it's especially hard when you're attached and very, very into what you're doing there. I was very involved. I was in the band. I was the best almost in the county. And um, I hadn't gotten into sports yet, but I just loved it there. And so when we moved here, it was very hard for me. Um, we didn't have to find a house until after about a year and a half from moving here, we lived with my grandparents, which was very hard. <laughs> but, um, so, which now we actually live down the road from my grandparents. So, yeah, I didn't think that'd be coming. But <laughs> we had to remodel our house and basically redo everything, which took a long time, about a year. So, I was very depressed when we left South Carolina because I felt like my whole life was there. And when we moved here, I just kind of shut down. And for that little while, I I 
Paul isn't a very good Christian. Let's just say that. Um, I always argued with my parents and my sisters. I always cried. I didn't feel like anyone at my school knew what I was going through. about a year and we didn't join but we loved it and some things happened and we had to leave and that was about two years after we moved here and I felt like everything was falling apart again because I was very attached to that church and it felt like home and we kept church searching and looking for something that felt right and we finally found a place and it's called the Community Church in Mount Pleasant and without my church family I don't know where I'd be. You're always there to surround me and love me. And just so many of you, each and every one of you, is such an impact on me. The community church at Mount Pleasant has brought me where I am today. Because without all of you in my youth group, I probably wouldn't be a Christian and or not a real one anyways. And God has given me so much. And even though living here instead of where I really want to be, which is South Carolina, I know that here is where I need to be because God put me here for a reason. And I cannot thank my church family enough for all that you do for me because it saved my life. It saved me. It saved my relationship with the Lord. Now I know that all things are possible because without my church family, I'm nothing. I feel like nothing. And y'all truly make me happy. And Jesus truly does work in all ways. Some people go through depression, some people go through different things, but after all that I've been through, I will never stop trusting in Jesus because he saved me and he made me new again and through it all he loved me and he was there for me and he cared for me and because of that I live for him. Was
we come to a close here, kept it at 12 o'clock, not too bad. Um, I wanted to say one more thing. You know, Audrey touched on, she had some good times, she had some bad times, she had some ups and downs. And um, our whole life is a journey. We're, we are going to have those bad times. We're going to fail. The Bible says so. We, we've done it in the past. It, it just happens. But the key to it is to continue on. Um, and God's, His plan for us is for us to grow. For the youth, for me, for everybody. Everybody needs to grow in Christ. Um, <coughs> If you, if you look at Job, you know, one of the things that Job said when he was, a lot of bad things that were happening to him, happening to his body, happening to his family, he said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. You know, I really thought about that. You know, how, how can he say that? You know, how could Job say that? Um, but you see, Job was in a spot where God brought him, you know, and, and that's where God wants to bring us to and, and our kids, where... No matter what happens, we're good. It, it, we're going to be okay. We're going to respond the same way. Paul was the same way. You know, he said that I'm ready to, to offer my body. But he came to that place because God teaches us as we go along. He, he takes us on that journey. And he, he continues to, to, to grow us spiritually. And he, some people, you know, think, well, you know, I'm, oh, man, I can't change, I can't, I keep doing this one thing, and I, I, I fail, and maybe I get discouraged, and that's what the devil wants us to do, right? He wants us to get discouraged, he wants us to say, oh, well, you know, we're done. Um, but the Bible says a righteous man will fall ten times and get back up. Well, we're going to fail, but we need to keep going on. Um, and as we, as we think about when we fell, sometimes it's tough, and we, we kind of almost beat yourself up about it. Um, we tell his youth, don't do that. But that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to beat yourself up about this, and you can't be that. But um, we always teach our youth that you can do all things in Christ who strengthens us, and, and that, that that's, that's a lie. But through our journey, continue to grow. Continue to reach out. You'll fail. Get back up again. I um, wanted to, real quick, have my wife just talk about what some of our youths uh, serve in before we get out of here. Because we have, we have a couple of them that do different things. So just wanted to go over that and recognize them real quick. Hey, everyone. Um, so David and I have the honor and pleasure of serving with Matt and Hillary uh, with the youth. And we come in here every Sunday and we see our youth serving and every capacity it seems around here. We have several that are in the orchestra. We have Aaron over here who does the visual. I saw Robbie last week helping his dad with the video. So everywhere you look, um, they are spending time. They come in early. They leave late. They help set up. Anytime we ask them to help us with anything, they're always willing. They have such a servant's heart already. Um, so we're really proud of them and it gives us hope and peace to know that our kids um, have a church like this that's supportive. Um, Javen also helps with the drums, and Javen helped um, a lot with our um, props for this morning. So, um, just wanted to say that we we love all of them, and we're happy that we that they come out and let us hang out with them on Sunday afternoon. We're going to go into our last song before I do. I want to read this verse from 1 John. It's 1 John 2, 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So if we could go back and say, I have written unto you, teens, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. That's our goal. We want our, our, our teenagers to be that. And um, if, if you'll notice, it says, because you are strong and the Word of God abides in you. That Word of God is through reading the Bible. It's through <coughs> us here and the youth, the, the leaders. It's the family. So um, I think that's a, a big key of, of, of raising children. So um, let me pull up our song. That's what we're going to do. One thing remains. 
and then we're going to have a prayer and end. Stand up and worship everybody.
buddy Austin. He wants to help us out, and, and then we'll, we'll dismiss you guys. Hello, Rick Pay. Oh, my grandmother. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being with us this evening, God, and, and helping us out, God. And uh, Father, I pray that you continue to work in our lives, Lord, and encourage us, Lord. Keep us humble, God, through our journey. And uh, give us understanding, Lord, and wisdom in, in your word of God. I pray that you just keep a hedge around us, Lord, and our family and our kids. And I pray that, Lord, we, we, would, we would make you proud of what we do, God. Um, thank you for all your, your mercies. And, uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The offering, if you guys are going to put an offering, we have on each end um, the little iron containers that are black. You can put your offering.